Look at that action. We're catching fish in the middle of the winter Saginaw Bay, the hot pond by the consumer's power plant. What is that? Well, we were going for walleye, but we caught carp, lots of carp. They have caught limits of walleye there, big walleye. That's what we were going after. But the carp is what we ended up with. Hey, we'll use it in a recipe. <laughs> we'll show you what that carp fishing action is like. Stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. Saginaw Bay in February. An amazing fishing hole. This bay holds all kinds of fish, most noted for its perch. Some 12 million every year for anglers, many of them taken through the ice. There's usually plenty of ice on the bay. It gets over two feet thick in places, usually safe for driving a truck to your fishing spot. But see that open water out there? And there's very thin ice in spots in the foreground. We're going to leave the Bronco on solid ground today because this was taped on Monday, 24 hours after the big wind and frigid temperatures. That shifted the ice, jammed a lot of it at the mouth of this canal where there's usually open water. That's where the anglers launched their boats to fish the famous Saginaw Bay hot pond, the one place in the bay where the water's warm and you can fish from boats year-round. That warm water comes out of the consumer's power generating plant, which sits on the edge of the bay. It draws water from the Saginaw River to cool the plant, puts it back about 20 degrees hotter than normal. These warm currents can make the nearby ice treacherous. Joe Harlow from Harlow's on the Bay at Essexville and Gail Bedore from Gail's Bait and Tackle in Quantacassee were our guides. The first problem we encountered was difficult Actually, it was dangerous. The ice that had blown into the mouth of the channel was pieced together like a jigsaw puzzle. This occurred the night before. Some of those chunks were frozen together solid, some weren't. But the only practical way to get the boats to open water was to drag them over about 200 yards of treacherous ice. And all the trips we've taken, all the risks we've taken during our hunting and fishing trips on Michigan Outdoors, this part of this trip was probably the most dangerous. Ah, success. The big danger is now over. We can get the outboards cranked up. We'll be on our way to what could be some outstanding walleye fishing, six and eight pounders. They're steelhead, brown trout, pike. You never know what you're going to catch at the hot pond, but the fish are often good sized. Keep an eye on the water for floating ice. Remember the Titanic. Sinking a boat in ice water like this could be dangerous, possibly fatal, so we go slow and stay cautious. There's a power plant that warms the water, attracts the fish, and of course attracts us fishermen. In the mornings, the steam off the water creates fog, but it also warms the air. For a day when the temperatures aren't much above 15, fishing the channels where the water was warm kept us warm too. The big lure, hot and tots, or some crankbait with a lip that digs down. You can cast if you want, but in this weather, it's easier to put on your gloves and troll. The bottom here is very clean, very few weeds or snags, so you can troll and let the lures bump the bottom. We were hoping for walleye, big ones, but the way the weather had changed the night before, Joe Harlow could make only one guarantee. We're going to catch carp, big carp. You'll see. <laughs> they hit everything here, hot and tots, uh, you know, anything you put in jigs. Everybody said they're not a carnivorous fish, but you'll, you just take this hot and tot, put it in front of his nose and he'll nail it. Hmm. Yes, sir. Also, we got walleye and steelhead in there, too. Yes, we do. Yeah, they've been doing real well with the steelhead, uh, more than walleyes. And uh, uh, I don't even think there's any steelheads planted around here. I don't know why they're coming up this hot pond. I they come up here. Because it's warm, Joe. Yeah, right. <laughs> like today. Yeah. yeah. Ah, there's a tail. I had snagged him in the tail. Boy, is he a big whopper. Oh, no one. No wonder it's a... Oh, no, it came loose. Well, at least we got to see him. Oh, that was a battle. That was a battle, I tell you. Yeah, what the heck? That's shallow water out there. You know, everybody thinks Saginaw Bay is a big body of water, and it's uh, uh, deep, but it's not. We go out in front of my place, and the wife and I swim out there all the time, and it's only up to our armpits, and we're out there half a mile from shore. Yeah, we got one. Many of the carp we caught, we snagged. That's how thick they were in the hot pond. How's that? Big one. I say that was a battle. <laughs> a big battle. 
Okay. I don't know if they like uh, deep water. It's amazing that they, a walleye is, uh, likes uh, a warmer water as they do. Everybody says a walleye is a deep fish. You know, they like deep water, but they're not, you know. Uh, they're, uh, uh, I looked in magazines, I think in yours, that they're, um, the temperature of the water that they like the best is 70. That's what they like the best. Well, 70 degree water is uh, awful warm. If you tell a sportsman 70 degree water, right now we're fishing in 50 degree water. Uh, uh, the temperature of the water out on the bay is probably 34, 35, you know, degrees. And uh, if it gets any, you got one? Yeah, no, that, one, you know, I had a snag, I think. That's the way a carp is, oh, just like oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, this is a good fishing spot here. It's a, uh, man, a lot of guys fish this. I had 100 cars Saturday, 100 cars. That's a lot of people, you know. Uh, it's a good spot to fish, good honey hole, what you call. Uh, I don't know if that was a fish or not. I think I'm getting close to the rocks. What a setting. You'd never think that a power plant would be something that would benefit the fishing, but it really does in a big way. That warm water attracts fish like a magnet. Now we're going to switch to some twister tail jigs, about a quarter or three-eighths of an ounce, break off the twister tail and put on a good-sized minnow. This is how the limits of walleye are taken, at least on days when the fishing is settled down. Right now we're suffering from the effects of the big storm the day before. That's the reason most of the fish aren't biting, but we're still gonna give it our best shot. Keep your hands warm when you're handling bait. You gotta keep them dry. A towel is something you should always have when you fish in weather like this. Now we had caught quite a few carp during the day, good sized ones too, that battled for several minutes, up to eight or 10. But Bob Garner had the royal battle that netted the biggest. That's a big one. Oh, look at yeah, that. look at the size of that. Probably about 18 pounds. Carp haven't been a favorite fish among anglers in America, although in Europe they've gained status in the past 35 years as a popular sport fish. And there's Bob with a real trophy, a big fish that wasn't easy to fight and land. We fished all day after the sun went down. That's how much fun we were having and how comfortable we were. I want to thank Consumers Power for leaving their hot pond open to fishermen. It made a great day for us, even if the walleye weren't biting in Michigan outdoors. Well, I don't know how you'd score that one. We didn't get the walleye we were after, but take a look. This is what we were looking for. Joe Harlow has taken right there. He has an 11 and a half pound walleye and a nine pounder. Those are the kind of fish that we were after, but hey, those. Bud Moore from Greenville should be happy. He took two nice fish from Lake Michigan mid-February last year. The lower one is the heavier one, nine pounds, 11 ounces, a walleye on a Swedish hook, and the six and three quarter pound brown trout hit a minnow on a tip up. What a day. Popular summer fish is the channel cat. This one, 17 and three quarter pounds, taken from Belleville Lake on a night crawler by John Kulak from Canton. That catfish was 34 inches long. Robin Bretain from Traverse City landed a trophy burbot last March on East Grand Traverse Bay. It weighed over seven pounds. Our spring sucker runs are only a couple months off. Jenny Holowinski from Manistee took this trophy red horse sucker, 25 inches, six and a third pounds, caught it on a red worm from the Pier Marquette River on the 2nd of April. Look at this crappie. A 17-incher, it weighed two pounds, three ounces. Brent Mahan from Zoaki caught it on a beetle spin from the Zoaki Pond last April. In the hunting category, John Helms from Lakeview made the Stroh's Trophy book with his opening day 11-pointer, a nice wide rack from Macosta County. And look at this buck taken from the UP. Chippewa County, 12 points, 20 and a half inch spread with 10 inch tines taken by Mark Maxson from Gaylord. At our Stroh's Hunting Awards banquet last year, we heard a lot of deer hunting tales like John Cerniak's, who missed this buck during bow season but changed his luck in November. I missed this deer at three feet with my bow. <laughs> missed it at three feet? Here, hold it down here a little bit. I want to get the story. How could you miss a deer at three feet? Well, I never got a shot. I oh. mean, he was right beside me, and I, but I remembered him. I bet. How, how did he approach you? I mean, how did you discover that this deer was three feet away from you? He bumped into the blind I was hunting in. It was a torrential downpour, and I was out hunting and snuck up on me. John Cerniak, Jr., one of many hunting award winners on stage at our Stroh's Hunting Awards Banquet. That's coming up February 21st, all of whom deserve the title as our Michigan Outdoors Hunters of the Week. 
The Michigan Department of Natural Resources has done it again. They've captured the interest and imagination of all of us with the recent Moose 2 project. In the short run, the positive public relations aspect of the moose transplant was incredible. The moose lift became front page news. There was something so neat about a half ton or so critter being lifted out of an Ontario provincial park by helicopter that not even Michigan's major dailies dared miss running a picture and a story. In the long run, it's really a better story than ever. The moose is a symbol of the changing forest and habitat in the Upper Peninsula. No longer will many of these forests support deer, but should be just great for moose. It's also a symbol of a changing attitude among UP sportsmen and DNR biologists. So far, not a single moose has been shot by a poacher because UP sportsmen have made no bones about it that they will tolerate no monkey business with their moose herd. But the DNR doesn't deserve all of the credit, and they'll be the first to tell you. The province of Ontario deserves many thanks for unselfishly giving up the moose. The Safari Club International is another group that deserves a thank you for putting their money where their mouths are to the tune of almost $50,000 for the entire moose experiment. The Upper Peninsula Sportsman's Alliance, the Michigan Wildlife Habitat Foundation, and the Ottawa County Sportsman's Club have been raising money for, from the start for this project. Other groups are now selling moose posters to raise additional monies, and we should congratulate them for their efforts. As I said before, the DNR captured our imagination and more importantly, importantly, the cooperation they needed to make the Moose Project a success. They did it by setting a goal and asking for help. And in my opinion, that's a formula that can work again for wildlife projects in the future. Well, Bob, the Outdoor Digest, heavier, thicker, better than ever. I hope all of you folks write in for your copy. And also, we appreciate your questions. For example, we have one here on deer. The $64,000 question. Fred, Floyd Brandt from Charlotte wants to know where do all the deer go after the first day of season? I'm sure I'll be talking about that on stage at the Central Michigan Sports Show coming up this weekend, but uh, they don't go anyplace, very basically. Now, I know hunters are going to say, yes, they do. No, I have some tape that I'm going to show, which I've shown this fall on Michigan Outdoors, that shows that they just bed down, they, they hang tight under brush, and they really don't go nearly as far as you think. Sometimes they'll move towards a swamp, but oftentimes, especially in farm country, they'll be around home. And, and only move at night. Here's a question for you, Bob, from uh, Wayne Asil from Mount Clemens. He says, we lived in Kansas where they have wipers, a cross between a striped bass and a white bass. They're a great fighting and great tasting fish. Why don't they produce them here in Michigan? Well, there's really been no need to. The DNR's talked about putting striped bass in, but they're very reticent to do that unless they can put it in a highly controllable situation. And the wipers, well, we already have some pretty good fishing. The walleye and the salmon programs uh, have predominantly taken over the interest. Don't Instead. forget the carp fishing. Oh, carp fishing. Hey. <laughs> That's great. We have 50-some species of fish in this state to fish for. There's plenty of them, and I think basically that's the answer to the striper story. Now, let's see if you can answer this question in our outdoor quiz. What is a splake, and what is a trousel, and what do they have in common? A splake is a cross between a speckled or brook trout and a lake trout, a popular sport fish in the U.S. A trousel is a cross between a brown trout and an Atlantic salmon, initially bred on a large scale in Ireland. Both hybrids are unique because the offspring are fertile and able to produce young. If you didn't know what a trousel is, you know what this is? You probably call it a thingamajig. But what it is, it's called an ampo fissure. This goes into the end of an artificial arm of an amputee, and this you replace on the handle of your fishing reel, and the amputee could actually reel uh, the, a fish in or a lure in with this little device. One of the many adaptive devices that we're going to have at the Central Michigan Sports Show this weekend. That's right. Catherine Mohop, you put together a fantastic array. What you say, what is the biggest collection? The of? biggest one we've ever heard of. The uh, biggest collection of adaptive, adaptive equipment? equipment for people fishing. And what do you have there? What is this is the Baddock Bracket, this device here that's uh, screwed onto the rod handle. It's for people who have problems gripping, arthritis or paraplegic, quadriplegic. They can put their hand in and tighten it down to wherever it's comfortable, and that will hold the rod very steady mm -hmm. with no gripping on their part. That could be useful for people with a severe tendonitis who couldn't, can't squeeze that rod handle. Here's right. something that's called a Vans Easy Cast. Now, this is for more severely disabled. For your quadriplegics, people with limited arm movement. So they could move their arms and shoulders. And look at this, this deal here. If they can 
close the, the reel here, or open the reel, a spin cast reel, pull this back. If they could get some movement just in their hand to pull that back on the bracket and swing it forward, you can actually let it go and cast. You cast 30 to get, 60 feet. 30 to 60 feet with this item. This is really something. This is called Vans Easy Cast. Yeah. The, some of the things they've come up with. This is for, a, like we said, a, a, someone who is very severely disabled. Right. But these ideas could be used by a lot of people, even with a temporary Certainly. severe disability. What do you have sure. there, Raj? I have one. This is the uh, for amputees. For one arm, you have electronic retriever, so you can cast. We have an electronic motor here for bringing the lure back or the fish back. Just a little 12 volt battery. 12 can you volt battery. can you speed that up or slow it down by how much you you? Yes, yeah, we can yeah. slow it down. Have a couple different controls. That I've heard is used by a tournament bass fisherman who won a hundred grand. Yeah, this was invented for a fellow for his dad with a stroke could only use one arm. And a bass fisherman took it out, and he went over $100,000 because it could reel in 40% oh. more than the other guy. Cast all day with that. Now, I know, Catherine, you, like a lot of us, have problems keeping warm out yes, on the ice. You being just Hands small. Hands and feet get very cold. Hands and feet. Here's an item called the... Handle warmer. Handle warmer. This is a 12-volt a battery operated that you plug into this handle, and you can replace a handle on a fishing rod, for example, an ice fishing rod, yep. very handy. And when you push the button and get, get this juice going in here, it heats up she very warm. She warms right up. Does. This is going to be something that a lot of fishermen are going to find important. We have the Catherine Mulhaupt has done up uh, an information sheet that we have right. free of charge, of course, if you write to us here at Michigan Outdoors. Uh, address will be coming up in just a few minutes, but there's a, a sheet with all of this adaptive equipment for fishing. At the sports show, we're going to have things on hunting. Right, do a Hunting, show fishing, every day. And gun archery. mounts and archery. It's going to be a great time. We have a lot more equipment than this, so I want you. This should actually be Saturday night main event, uh -huh. <laughs> That's right, right here, because we are doing something I've never done before. We have uh, fried up some of the small carp that we got. Bob can go first. <laughs> and it's something that the ethnic market is big on on carp. Oh sure, give it, give <laughs> it the Europe? Bob. Give it the Bob. Yeah. No, they have some walleye. Uh, I'm amazed because I snitched a little piece of this and. And I was really amazed. That's what you said. How, you said it was very tasty. Was. It's really quite a simple recipe. Just a golden fry batter. It's got flour and egg and milk. And that's about your main ingredients. You're going to put the oil in with the flour and just kind of make a batter here. And you actually want to use beaters on it when you get the milk in because you want it very, very thin. You don't want it to stick very much at all here. And about a half cup of milk and your, your egg. And that's about all the ingredients in this whole batter. And like I say, you do want to use a mixer because you want it mixed up very, very well. Now that egg is going to, when you cook it, is what it gives it, that golden yes, color? Yes, yep. And it'll actually stick the batter together, too. It helps hold the batter together. And it's very thin when you get done. It's uh, quite thin. Oh, perch. There you go. If we could have <laughs> That's perch, not carp. Yeah. That's not carp, no. <laughs> but that is a real white meat. Yep. And you are going to coat your fish pieces because otherwise your batter just won't stick at all because it is so thin. If it was a thicker batter, it'd stick without adding flour to your fish. You want to dunk these real good. You want to make sure you get a lot of the batter on because it runs right off. Mm -hmm. Just let mm. it quit dripping there and then you can go ahead and fry it. And it just takes a couple minutes to fry these small pieces. And they fry quite golden brown with the egg in it. And it, the only spices in here is just a little bit of salt and pepper and that was it. Mm. Then well, there's, there. you can add lemon juice here or you can mm -hmm. add lemon. Just about anything you wanted. There it is, doesn't take much. Golden Fry Golden batter. Fry Batter by Nancy Skidmore. And that was Skidmore. sent by Nancy Skidmore from Madison Heights who sent us this. And we have a hole in the plate here already <laughs> where we've taken this out. You can see the difference. If I hold this up here, here's a piece of walleye that is really white and flaky. Now this carp, which, I tell you, it's been a long time working up to this. I mean, I don't mind saying that uh, carp is just not something that's a... Uh, that's regarded as a delicacy in this country good. by, uh, but the ethnic market is big on mm -hmm. it, and Europe. like I said, and, and a lot of Michigan carp go to New York and to Europe, and the Jewish market, mm -hmm. it, it's big. We we've known some people from Europe who said, "What? You don't eat carp in yeah, this country?" Yeah, that's right. They've asked why. Now, how They'd is rather it? fish the carp than the salmon too. How is that? Actually, in this recipe, because the walleye is a little little too done, the carp is better. I was amazed. This it's a darker meat, mm -hmm. and it tastes to me a lot like salmon Close or lake trout. Salmon. Mm -hmm. It stays moist too. It does. I was uh, excellent. I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> it has. It a, is good. I'm surprised. Yeah, like suckers, which are also tasty. It has a lot of bones in it. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Nancy Skidmore, you have a winner. I bet didn't think we'd try it out on this carpet. We got <laughs> I'm glad we did. Yeah, yeah I'm good. That's right. Very interesting. Very good recipe. A runner-up in our recipe contest, so make sure you get your entries in. Send them to us right away, real quick, and we can get you logged in as a competitor. Hope you can get outdoors this weekend. Catch some fish of some kind. Use a golden fried batter. Outdoors is a great place to be. See you next week. The current issue of the Outdoor Digest, that's where you can find the recipe for golden fry batter, along with all of our Michigan Outdoors recipes for January and February. The Digest contains articles on hunting, fishing, shooting, and wild game cookery, plus the Outdoors Forever supplement with articles and information on how you can make the outdoors a lifetime activity. No battle that netted the biggest. Mm. That's a big one. Oh, look at yeah, that. look at the size of that. Probably about 18 pounds. Carp haven't been a favorite fish among anglers in America, although in Europe they've gained status in the past 35 years as a popular sport fish. And there's Bob with a real trophy, a big fish that wasn't easy to fight and land. We fished all day after the sun went down. That's how much fun we were having and how comfortable we were. I want to thank Consumers Power for leaving their hot pond open to fishermen. It made a great day for us, even if the walleye weren't biting in Michigan outdoors.